David here with Fig Boon on Pens, back again with another video. Today, I'm going to have something a bit different for you. Uh, I recently attended the San Francisco Pen Show, so I will recap the show as well as my adventures bookending the show. And then I'll share a bit of my modest pen show haul. So let's get right to it. While I love to travel, this is the first flight I've taken in almost three years. Uh, it felt a bit strange and foreign. Uh, travel is fun. Uh, I think I'm pretty adept at maneuvering around unfamiliar airports and cities. Uh, even if it's traveling for work to a not-so-exciting destination, it can be a little adventurous. Um, I like the view looking down at everything from the sky. Here's the approach into Chicago, where you can see the skyline and the north side of town. Uh, you can even see Wrigley Field there. It looks a lot different than California cities, which feel like they're just plopped down in the middle of desolate desert. On the flight, I used the time to catch up on some correspondence. Uh, I was a bit behind, and it was a good time to get some writing done. Uh, oh, and something a little bit on the serious side. Uh, you may or may not be aware, but uh, Lisa Van Ness of Van Ness Pens recently lost her adult daughter due to a sudden illness. Um, she had requested that the pen community write letters to the hospital staff who did their best to make a very difficult time a little less difficult. Um, I wrote my letter to the staff, and if you could take a couple of minutes out of your day to write a letter, I'm sure it would be greatly appreciated. I'll put the address in the notes below to this video. Um, getting back to the flight, I enjoy the approach to the San Francisco airport. Um, you come over water, and if you don't know any better, you'd think the plane was going to land in the water, but then at the last moment, the runway appears. I got into town a couple of days early. Um, I have some family who lives in the area, and I wanted to spend some time with them. Uh, the first thing I did after arriving in town was head over to Rickshaw Bag Works. This is Mark Dwight, the gentleman behind the brand. Uh, it was interesting to take a look at their production facilities. I know it's tough to see here, but this machine is cutting out a pattern for a piece. Uh, one of the cool things about Rickshaw is they can put just about any graphic on their products at all. Here's an example of a bag in the shape of a box of goldfish crackers. Uh, Rickshaw is a company that takes a lot of care and consideration into the creation of their products. Uh, they are of high quality and priced attractively as well. They recently began a partnership with Knock, so moving forward you will see a lot of Rickshaw slash Knock branded products, which I felt was a good partnership for both brands. Uh, if you don't have any Rickshaw bags or pen sleeves, it's something I highly recommend. The interior material they use is the softest, plushest material you've ever felt. They really provide your pen with a luxurious home. On a future Fig Boot on Pens project, the pen just might come with a rickshaw product. We'll see. After rickshaw, I headed into town. We had tickets to see one of my favorite bands in concert, LCD Sound System. I had never seen them in concert before. I had debated whether or not to go uh, between getting up very early for my flight, the time change, and then staying up for the concert. It would require me to stay up for 24 hours straight, and I, I wondered if it would be worth it. But, you know, I've always been of the mindset that it is worth the extra effort to do something cool when traveling. Uh, the memory of the effort fades, but the memory of the experience stays. It was at the Warfield Theater, which holds about 2,300 people, so it was a nice, intimate show. Uh, the concert was great, and I was really glad that I went. The next day, we drove about an hour north of town. Uh, the drive along the coast was beautiful. Uh, we went to a lagoon and kayaked for a couple of hours. We had these Oru kayaks. Uh, I will say, I don't know a lot about kayaking, but later on at the show, uh, everyone I showed this picture to asked about these kayaks and if they were worthwhile. So I guess they're rather well known. Uh, they work great, even for a novice kayaker like myself. Uh, it was a very scenic area and I made lots of friends along the way. I lost track of all the seals swimming around us. 
Uh, two hours and at least two or three miles was quite a long time to be on the water, but I enjoyed it. Uh, after kayaking, as we were coming back into the city, we stopped at this natural spring where everyone stops to fill up their water bottles. At first, I was a little skeptical of this random pipe coming out of the side of a mountain, but it wasn't long before cars full of people stopped for water, so I felt better that this wasn't a uh, death pipe. Uh, after that, we stopped for a late lunch at this great Puerto Rican restaurant. The food was fantastic. Uh, I thought it was funny. Uh, you saw the exterior of the restaurant was a bright green. Uh, the restaurant received a complaint from someone about the color of their building. Uh, their response was to frame the letter and hang it by the entrance for everyone to see. I know it's tough to see here, but the complaint is a little racist, and the kind of a place that would take a complaint letter like that and have it on display is the kind of place I like to frequent. Uh, finally, we stopped off at this cool chocolate shop and had one of the best cups of hot chocolate I've ever had, and a delicious chocolate and lemon macaroon. It was a delicious end to our adventurous day. I headed back to the hotel, and there was a nice mixer for the pen show attendees. It was a good way to begin the show festivities. Okay, that's enough about the pre-show adventures. Let's get to the actual show. Uh, it's held at the Grand Bay Hotel, which is nicer than the temporary sign out front would indicate. It's a convenient location in regard to proximity to the airport, but it's a bit of a drive to get to San Francisco proper in order to see the sights. Uh, the San Francisco show has been described as the fun show, and I will agree that there was a real positive vibe in the room. Uh, the show was really well organized, and especially on Saturday, it was really well attended. Uh, this was the first show I have attended which was dog-friendly. Uh, there were many well-behaved puppies of all sizes all about the show. One of my favorite things about the show was a chance to hang out with some West Coast and Asian companies that don't typically make it to the East Coast shows I typically frequent. Uh, Toyoka Craft was at the show and was one of the more popular tables. On Friday morning, there was a rather large line. Uh, their large pen cases went fairly quickly. Uh, they didn't bring any of their hundred pen cases with them, but if they had, I bet those would have moved quickly as well. Uh, by the end of the show, they only had one or two small trays left. Uh, Toyoka Craft makes some very nice, high-quality storage options. Uh, it's something very much worth checking out. I own a few of their pieces and get good use out of them. I, I have a 100-pen case as well as a small rolling desk. Uh, and then I picked up a small tray at the show that I'll show you here in a bit. My family member who lives in the area joined me at the show for a couple hours on Friday. Uh, they aren't into pens, but wanted to at least check out the show. Uh, they came across some vintage Pelican 140 models and instantly fell in love with them. So I purchased one of them for them. Then, of course, we needed to get some ink. So we headed over to the Drum Ghouls table where Jessie Rain was helping out, and she helped pair the pen with the perfect ink. Uh, then they wanted a notebook, so we picked up a very nice Tomoe one from Misubi, uh, the old stock off of machine number seven. Then I gave them a second pen that I had, and we had to go back to Drom Ghouls for another bottle of ink, because of course the first color we bought didn't quite match this second pen as well. Uh, it was kind of fun to see someone fall down the rabbit hole in real time, and I really wasn't pushing them at all. This was all of their own free will. Uh, the next day, they texted me telling how much they loved their new pen, and they wondered if I could help them find a leather cover for their new notebook. Uh, it was funny, because by the time I had a chance to get back to them, they had gone out to a store, purchased one, and kind of DIY'd it to fit their Masubi notebook. On Saturday, there was a significant lineup of folks waiting to enter the show. Uh, in regard to the layout, there was an entryway, uh, then there was a front room, and then there was a secondary front room. Uh, there was a side room that housed several of the nib grinders attending the show, like Mike Matsuyama and CY. And then there was the main room. Uh, it was a layout that flowed well, and no one really felt like they were banished to a room that was difficult to find. Uh, I made some great discoveries at the show. Uh, there was Skogsy pens. Here is Zach and Amy. Uh, I picked up one of their micarta pens, which I'll show you here in a bit, but it was nice to see them with lots of inventory at the beginning of the show and only one or two pens remaining near the end of the weekend. I believe they actually completely sold out by the end of the show. 
Keras Pen Company had this mammoth beast called the Mega Cube. It holds 99 pens. On the bottom, it's engraved with the Mega Cube name, and I know it's hard to see here, but it also says 99 problems, but a pen ain't one. Uh, Jonathan Brooks was there. Uh, this was near the beginning of the show. His inventory on hand was significantly reduced by the end of the weekend. Uh, Ian Schoen was there with his Schoen Design gang. Uh, you could see Gina Cellarino hiding there in the back as well. Uh, Enigma Blanks was there. This was a new company to me, uh, but they had some interesting looking blanks for sale. Uh, their daughter was there as well, selling her own line of stationery. And check this out. Their daughter's name is Penn. Uh, it's nice to see young entrepreneurs like that. Uh, I learned about another brick and mortar shop in the Westwood area of Los Angeles that I wasn't familiar with called Flax Pen to Paper. I purchased a pen from them, an exclusive Montegrappa model, so you'll be hearing more about the store during that review. Uh, another great thing about the San Francisco show is the abundance of classes and seminars and events scheduled throughout each day. There was an auction with Sid Saperstein acting as the auctioneer. Uh, Sid is the organizer of the San Francisco show and does a great job with that. One evening, there was a fun event where a number of podcast hosts came together for a lively discussion. Uh, there was a social event with a live band, which was nice as well. Um, I really liked the layout of the show. There was a, a little area off of the main room, which provided folks with a place to get off their feet for a bit. The bar area was a lively gathering place each evening for Pen Show After Dark as well. Uh, it wasn't like the DC show this year where they kicked everyone out at 10 p.m. One of the more interesting and mostly disturbing discoveries of the show was the now infamous Kiwi pen. Uh, an attendee was showing off the pen, which she had made with some custom resin she poured herself. You can see it here. It looks a lot like a kiwi. Uh, the woman is an entomologist, and if you look closely, the black spots are actually ticks, which have been embedded into the resin. Now, if you are an entomologist who studies ticks, then I can certainly see the attraction to create a pen like this. But for most of the rest of us, it was a bit disturbing. Now, I will say that for a handmade pen full of ticks, it was very well executed. Uh, it looked nice from a distance, and the woman loves her pen, which is the most important thing. Oh, and then no West Coast trip is complete without a few trips to in and out uh, There was one about a mile from the hotel. Uh, you can have your Five Guys, you can have your Whataburger. Uh, for me, in and out is the best fast food burger around. Uh, and then add some peppers to it for a little kick. Uh, and don't forget to get your fries well done. I typically don't do animal style, but that's a solid off-the-menu option as well. So... In the end, did I feel the show lived up to the fun show moniker? Absolutely. It was one of my favorite shows I've attended. The only thing that might keep me from coming back each year is the show's proximity on the calendar to the DC show. Uh, it's tough to take time off from work at the beginning of the month for DC and then three weeks later take more time off for San Francisco. Uh, the show was very well organized and there was an extremely positive vibe in the room. One of the greatest things uh, I love to see there is the camaraderie between the artisan and creators at a show and how willing everyone is to help one another out learning and succeeding. Um, I witnessed one help another with their resin recipe. Um, I saw another helping a fairly large company redesign their website. Everyone is willing to help another without feeling threatened. And it was great meeting and hanging with a group of new friends. Uh, the show came to a close on Sunday, and everyone said their goodbyes, and I headed back to the airport. Um, I wasn't heading home, though. My West Coast adventure was not yet complete. Uh, rather than heading back home to North Carolina, I headed down to San Diego. The flight was nice, and the sunset even reminded me of a certain collaboration with Franklin Kristoff. Uh, it's tough to see here, but I've always liked the approach into Lindbergh Field. You get very low over a neighborhood before landing. From the window, it always just looks like you're closer to these buildings than you should be. Uh, when walking out of the airport, you can immediately smell the ocean in the air, and to me, it smells like home. Uh, I was in San Diego for a couple of days and mainly just hung out with family, but I did take a little field trip to La Jolla where I visited Warwick's, which to the best of my knowledge is really the only brick and mortar store selling fountain pens in the area. 
Uh, Warwick's is a store which has a large gift section. Uh, there's a whole book wing to the store, and then they have an extended counter where they carry a decent variety of fountain pens. While I didn't pick anything up, it's still nice to visit a brick and mortar store carrying pens. I scoured what they had on hand in a hope that there was a rare or limited model that they just happened to have on stock, but I was unsuccessful in my search. One afternoon, we drove up to the top of Mount Helix, which gives you one of the best 360 degree viewpoints in the county. You could see all the way from Lakeside, which is in the far east county, all the way out to Point Loma in the Pacific Ocean. The last thing I did before heading to the airport was to make a stop at the San Diego Air and Space Museum. Uh, if you are into aviation and history, it's one of the best aerospace museums in the country. Um, I have a family member who volunteers down in the renovation and restoration shop in the museum's basement. Uh, they do some very cool work down there. They restore planes as well as create high detailed replicas from scratch. These are some examples of some of their previous projects which are now being displayed in the museum. They have a current project they are building from scratch which is a Hughes H1. The problem is there was only one of these planes ever made and it currently resides in the Smithsonian in Washington DC. And the blueprints for this plane are nowhere to be found. So they're having to recreate this plane from pictures and create every single piece by hand. It's a several year process to recreate in intricate detail a plane of historical significance such as this one. Okay, that's enough about my adventures. It was fun to get away and spend some time on the West Coast, but it was also nice to get home and back to my usual routine. The San Francisco show was outstanding. If you are in the area or if you're looking for a show to travel to, it's one I would strongly recommend attending. Okay. I mentioned my haul from the show was modest, but I did pick up a few things. And to show you what those things are, please join me over here at camera two. First off, I got some nice stickers from Tokyo Inklings, which were kind of cool. Um, I had purchased a uh, t-shirt from Rickshaw Bag Works, and they also included a number of stickers. Uh, this was the actual design that was on the front of the shirt some other stickers they had, as well as a nice San Francisco pen show um, postcard there. One of my favorite things I picked up here from the show was the Skogsy Micarta. Um, this is a really interesting micarta pen. And one of the things I noticed right off the bat uh, is Zach does a really good job of lining everything up and how uh, there's only one thread. And for the most part, it lines up really nice, even though these are two separate pieces of the material. Um, and that I enjoy this pen. I like the fact, even though it's not necessarily the largest pen, has a nice thick section. And I look forward to reviewing that and sharing more about this pen with you. Uh, it also included this nice stand that sits on there. And I like that it includes the little uh, uh, plastic bumps here, or the rubber bumps here, as opposed to it just sitting right on the wood. Next up is the limited edition pen that I picked up from Flax Pen to Paper, which is the Montegrappa Venetia Rio di San Marcula. I probably butchered that name, but uh, what I liked about this is uh, the Flax Pen to Paper is a company that is basically an art supply store, or at least that's a portion of their business, and I really thought that this looked a lot like uh, oil paints. Uh, and just thought it had a really neat look to it. And Montegrappa's nibs are outstanding as well. So I look forward, I haven't even inked this one up yet. I look forward to testing it out. Then next up, we had a pen from Estherbrook, which is the Estherbrook SD Oversize in the Sea Glass. Um, this one has the flex nib, uh, and one of the interesting things is that Estherbrook is now offering these flex nibs at no additional cost. And I'll talk more about that during the review of this pen. But um, I don't have an oversized one of these pens, so I'm looking forward to playing with this one as well. And then another pen here, this is the Magna Carta Libertatum, and this is in the Baron series with its red and golden resin. I recently reviewed another pen in this series, which was the Crown, which had a pneumatic filler and a number six nib. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen, but it has a very nice number eight sized Magna Carta nib, which will be fun to play with. And then I mentioned I did pick something up from Toyoka Craft. Let's go ahead and get this out of the box. I haven't even taken it out of the box yet. Let's see if it fits here on the 
screen and it's a little pen tray. And the main reason I picked this up is because when I'm doing pen reviews, I have a tendency to kind of have the extra pens sitting here kind of precariously on my desk uh, that I use. And I thought that it would be nice to have a little tray to put those in so that nothing, they don't roll off the desk or anything like that. So um, I wanted one of their new items, but I wanted a purpose for it rather than just picking it up because it looked cool. So I decided I had a purpose for it and I picked it up and I really liked this little simple tray. The last thing I picked up was this Misubi notebook. Let me go ahead and open this up. I haven't opened it up since I got home. But it is a nice A5 Misubi notebook that really doesn't fit into the screen there. Uh, but it has the nice Tomoe River paper. Uh, and I'm looking forward to using this. Uh, on another note, um, I had this, you know what, let me zoom out just a little bit. There, just a little bit. I had this book from Odyssey that I took with me, and I was a little disappointed at the durability. While I liked the paper, I was kind of documenting my trip as I went along. Uh, and while the paper is very nice, you could see here that just with a little bit of wear and tear of it being in my bag and kind of just being brought in and out, that it didn't really hold up that well, which disappointed me a little bit because I like the notebook, I like the size, I like the paper, but uh, the notebook itself wasn't quite as durable as I had hoped for. Overall, the San Francisco Pen Show was outstanding. Um, that it will uh, be a bit before I attend another show. I typically go to the Atlanta show, which is in seven months. So there will be a bit of a wait, but it was really fun to get back out to another show. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.